Welcome to Section 2, Creating Basic Architecture. Now, when we're looking at this map, there's a ton of detail that we can put into it. There's a lot of space right in here, there's a few buildings right here, a ton of railings which cir uh, circle the entire thing, there's a ton of architecture under here. But the first thing that we want to model is going to be the main structure, because that's going to give us the perspective which will drive the rest of the structure. Um, and the most obvious bit of that is going to be the concrete rise and run right here. So what I did is I went to Google Maps and I zoomed in and got a screenshot of this area and this area. And I just put them on planes and overlaid them using the techniques I talked about earlier. From video reference, I've already determined that the height of the rise and run is one foot. So what we want is the width. I've already counted that within this marquee there's 32 stairs and it looks like the width of the entire thing is about 77 feet. So let's figure out the individual width using basic math. 77 feet times 12 inches and a foot plus 8.65 8.865 inches divided by 32 is 29.15 inches each. So the next step is to create the rise and run in spline format. So let's go in here and our height is going to be one foot. Already copied our width in there. Let's bring this down to ground plane level and move it over here and put it in the front row. Good. Convert to editable spline. Right to left marquee to select these guys. Control B to snap and we want to bring this up 33 times. I'm going to pause. As you can see I've made 33 of these so what I'm going to do is select them on the vertex level and just hit weld so that these guys are all connected. Alright, so the next step of our tutorial is going to be to make a line and then loft our shape that we just made along that line. Let's hold down shift as we make it so that it will remain straight. Go into the component editor and just make sure that this lines up with our buildings, which it looks like it does. And then I want to take this line we just made and our spline and isolate them. Uh, I like isolate, so I'm going to make that a hotkey. I'm going to assign that to I. Now, let's take this guy, turn on snapping, bring it up to here, hit X so that it snaps only in the X axis. And now we're ready to make our loft. Again, let's bring this and bring it up to there. Those two are lining up. In our main um, poly modeling, we want to take this pull down menu and open compound objects, hit loft, select our shape, and get path. And it creates this thing. Why is it black? Well, that's because our normals are inverted. Uh, a normal is an invisible thing which tells us which way our polygons are facing and as you can see they're very clear from the underside. I have this handy little button right here which I added using this. If you click that and hit configure modifier sets you can select pretty much anything that can be accessed through our modifier list and put it into these buttons for ease of access. If you don't have that set up just go to here hit in for normal and we have this option for flip normals and uh, right click collapse all. It was previously a loft and it is now converted into an edible mesh which is fine for our purposes. I like poly though so let's move it there. I'm just gonna pause the video right here while I do the same thing to the other side and I'll see you in a few minutes. Alright, now that we've got our bleachers set up, first thing I'm going to do is uh, assign a few more hotkeys. First thing I want is zoom extends all selected. Let's see. 
zoom extend select it. So I want that to be control V and I also want view edged faces toggle which is going to be control alt Z or I'm sorry control alt Q that's going to let us toggle between having our wireframe or our edged faces on next thing I want is to create some kill objects that's not going to make too big a deal now but it'll make a big deal later when we're placing our objects so let's just go ahead and create some rectangles where our stairs are going to be um, yeah now most of the time our, uh, our sizings are going to be pretty consistent so let's take this to 9 inches 3 feet 9 inches bring it down here. I'm just going to do that for this entire scene. I'm going to pause it and I'll be back when I'm done. Alright, now that we've made our kill objects, it's time to start going in and cutting up the bleachers. The purpose behind these is to indicate where there's going to be stairs, exits, or gates in the railing. But we don't really need them right now, so let's hide them. Hide is another hotkey I really like to have, so let's go hide. We want hide selection. So assign H and assign. Alright, so if you look at the map here, the bleachers go up about 10 rows, cut off here, go in here into the candy cap section, and then cut off at about this point. So I'm going to unhide by name, select our east, rise and run, and our kill object. Um, I'm going to go down to wireframe mode with control Q, and I'm going to use that kill object I made as a point of reference for where I'm going to make my cut. Now we want 10 objects up, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then let's select from here on up. So let's go into front viewport. And make our ins we want shift Q is going to shift toggle between these two and that's one of those hotkeys I assigned earlier now I'm going to control B to get our snap toggle and select these two points to make our cut this is going to be precisely where we want it so no need to second guess ourselves at this point point. and then we just delete if we look at our overhead map here, then we see the next step we're going to want to take is to cut into the vomitories, which is these exit areas. So let's go over here and select our face. We want from here to here. So select those guys. And then it, once again, just go in and make our incisions. I'm going to pause the video while I make those changes. Our next step is to create the stairs. With midpoint snap toggle on, we want to create a box and convert it to editable poly. Let's bring this vertex over here and just make sure that it lines up with the length. We want to scoot this back so it rests against it. One thing, both in low or high poly modeling, you never want to be wasteful. So let's create the polygons which the camera is actually going to see, and then hit Control i for invert selection, and just delete those polys that we're not looking at. Next step is to turn our snap back on, and move this up, and then we can choose number of copies we want, and we want 31. So as you see, it calculates how far over and up we moved that box, and then it repeats it. And because our geometry is perfectly spaced, um, it works just fine. I intentionally didn't put a step on this last level, because typically we wouldn't have a step going off into infinity. So let's turn this to wireframe, and set attach with the box we want to attach everything named box 
Now we have our stairs, so let's rename them. Let's grab this, and with snap on, just drag it down into our vomitory sections. Now as you see, we've got stairs going down in this section, and then this section is spaced over. So I'm just going to move those so that they're in the proper spacing sections, and I'll do that for the entire section, and then I'll um, pick up where I left off. All right, stairs are made. As you can see, they're not a straight line that just got copied over. If you look at your reference, you can see that the stairs follow the lines of the exit and extend out a little bit at the base here. There's a bit of wonkiness at the edge here as well. Um, so the basic rule there is just to make sure you're constantly looking at your reference and following that as opposed to something that may seem to make more sense to you. All right, over here you can see that some of the stairs appear that they're floating. That's not a mistake. In that area, there's a section right here and right here for handicap seating, which is just a raised box. So that's the next thing we're going to make. Let's take a box modeling, and according to our reference, they extend up for three seats, so one, two, three and pull it up. I'm going to just copy it over here and I'll see you when I'm done. Alright, so now that's copied over. So let's just take the tops here, ignore back facing, grab the tops, and bring them down to the proper level. So what we're noticing here is that it's going the right amount of bleachers, one, two, three, but the stairs are off. So let's just select this, and what I'm going to do instead of deleting this is I'm going to grab all of it and delete this. Uh, unselect the top face, grab this, bring it down, and then just select this edge and bring it over to here. Um, I'm going to put on selected faces an X, and then just grab it and start manipulating some stairs in here because there's no bleachers to stand in in that area, so we need to make something to compensate for that. Good. Now we just select all of this and weld, and our vertices will be set. If you're ever considered or er, concerned that some of your vertices didn't weld, a good test is just is to select the boundary, hit Control Alt A, so that it selects everything, and then you can see there's no red selected in here, so these vertices are in fact welded. That concludes this section of the tutorial. At the end of each section, I want you to make sure to go in and find any objects that are not named and either rename them or if they don't belong in the scene, delete them. In this case, I've attached the bleachers to the stairs as I want them to be one object. I'm going to continue to model the geometry of this in a low geometry setting, but I'm not going to record it because it's going to be tedious work and it's going to mainly consist of me checking my video reference. If you're working alongside, you should also do the same thing.